Hey guys! Good morning! Welcome to church and happy, happy Easter. Easter! Jinx! <laughs> it is the best Sunday, the so best good to day see you of guys the year, here. you guys. Yeah. We're so glad that you joined us this morning Thanks for church for at us. A2 Church. Yeah, so, so excited that you're here for Easter at A2. Welcome to the foyer. My name is Zach. I'm Shelby. And we're just so happy that you're here today. Shelby, I am so excited for our worship experience today. Are you so excited? I'm so excited. It's I gonna know be awesome. it's going to be an amazing worship experience, and we're just a few minutes away from being able to celebrate just the most exciting day of the entire year for our Christian faith. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be a great experience. So I'm so glad that you guys are all tuning in and watching us today, whether you're on A2 TV or Facebook or YouTube. We're just we're just so glad that you came to church today. So, yeah, it's yeah. so good to see you guys. For sure, yep. Um, before we get started, you know, while we're out here just hanging out in the foyer yeah. and talking, make sure you share this link with it's a friend. It's a great time to share. Um, just, you know, copy and paste, yep. click the share button. It's yep. the easiest invite to church you're ever going to get. So easy. Just I mean, send it to your friends, your family, coworkers. Copy and paste the link. Open up your text messages. Put a name in there and send <laughs> it. I mean, that's that's I all there is to it. Anybody these days can use the hope of Easter. Absolutely. So share this with somebody that yeah, needs it today. For sure, for sure. We've got a lot of great stuff coming your way during the weeks. So hopefully, you guys have been following along on all of our platforms and especially on social media. But one of the greatest things I think that we've started doing is uh, the midweek worship experience. Yeah, come on. Yeah, so the worship experience, I mean, the midweek worship experience has just been so good because, you know, Pastor Chris is bringing this awesome teaching out of Philippians. Yeah. And I just love deep Bible studies, you know. Yeah. I'm just a big nerd that way. But I just love the content that he's bringing to us. And it's so encouraging in the middle of the week. And then, of course, the worship has just been really intimate, very, very meaningful. And so hopefully you guys have been able to go and to tune in live. It's on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on all of our, on all of our channels. It's so everywhere. It's everywhere. You can check it out. And we also post it when it's done airing live. So if you're, you know, doing the laundry or something at seven and you can't tune in, then it, we definitely post it afterwards for you to be able to watch That's it awesome. then. Yeah, for sure. So. Something else we've got coming up is a lunch and learn. Yes. It's going to be I April 23rd at 12 o'clock on the dot at yeah. noon. Lunch and Learn is something that Pastor Chris is very passionate about. He loves to pour into and help grow business leaders. Yeah. And he also loves Birmingham. So yes. I think hosting Lunch and Learns might be one of his favorite things to do. I love the Lunch and Learns. I have the privilege of going to all of them. And, you know, the one that we did last month was incredibly meaningful. We offered it on A2TV. It was kind of right when all of this stuff was starting, yeah. but that didn't keep us from bringing an amazing teaching to business leaders all throughout our city. And so you can tune in and watch it on A2TV. We're yeah. continuing uh, the series through the book, Know What You're For by Jeff Henderson. So if you're a business leader or if you're in business or if you know someone in business, then be sure to make sure that they get the information about the next Lunch and Learn that we're doing in April. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's always yeah, great. It's always great. Something new that we're starting to do just to encourage you guys and bring a little lightness and joy throughout your week is we're posting some new music. Mm. We're doing covers, worship songs, just yeah. songs that are joyful. And we're calling it music that matters because music right now matters. what matters is having hope and being yeah. encouraged and just having things that can help you feel just lighter, I think, in yeah. this season of heaviness and For sure. so much unknown. So yeah. um, you can actually find those on the church's YouTube channel. You can also find them on the website. If you go to a2.church, uh, then we actually have a tab there called music that matters. So you can check it out there as well. Who knew that the church had a YouTube channel? I did. You did? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, on YouTube, you'll just search for A2 Church Birmingham. It's all one word, and you can find the music there. You can also find Sunday morning services, yeah. midweek, any mm -hmm. pretty much anything that we're yeah. filming and streaming, you can find it on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, the YouTube streaming service is really great, and the A2, T, uh, A2 TV streaming service is great. As we've said before, A2 TV is just really great because within the same window, you can be watching the service, you can be chatting with the people that are also watching the service. You can pull up the sermon notes. You can have a Bible open there. You don't have to even have it in a separate tab. It's all there. It's all there. It's like you're at church. It's really, I mean, it's great. So A2 TV is definitely an amazing feature. So I encourage you, if you're not streaming on A2 TV, be sure to head over there. Yeah. So that way you can check it out. Definitely. It's a good yeah. place to hang out. It's a great place to hang out. Yeah, for sure. So we already kind of hit on this, but I just wanted to elaborate again on the power of a share. Yeah. The power of a share. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I came up with that. I'm just 
just kidding. <laughs> but the, there's so much power in sharing the worship experiences yeah. and the music and the midweeks and all of the content that we've been putting out uh, to our friends and to our families and to people that we know just are not connected into a faith-based community right now because there's just so much fear and there's so much uncertainty. And we know that we have something to be hopeful for, Absolutely. especially on Easter Sunday. Amen. And there is so much power in sharing the things that we are coming out with. I just want to encourage you, if you haven't jumped in and if you're not doing that, then I just want to encourage you, just try one friend. Just try it one time right now. And just, I, you know, I almost want to dare them. You remember like in grade school where Got people, like a double dog like dare? A double dog dare. <laughs> you have to do it now, so. But yeah, we're just Share getting... it with somebody this morning. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that a lot of people during this time, whether they're a member of another church or no church at all. Sure. A lot of people have just been more receptive to being they're invited so during receptive. this time. Yeah, and it's really cool to see how God is using the ministries at A2 and the platforms that we have to touch people, not only across our city, but also across our state and even in different regions of the country, you know, it's just so, so powerful. Yeah. So power of a share, be sure to participate with us on that, especially on Easter. So, yeah. you know, you guys are just so amazing. We have just been getting story after story about how our church is, is stepping up during this, during these challenging times and, and offering assistance, whether it be in the form of service or mm -hmm. in the form of giving. Yes. And it's just so encouraging to be a part of a church body that yeah. is actively being the body of Christ. Christ. Yeah. And so, I mean, we've just been hearing stories about how people in our community, our, our church are asking us like, hey, are, are there anybody, uh, do you know of anyone that needs some help right now? Like, I want to be able to provide for someone that's been financially impacted by COVID-19. Hmm. And it's just so encouraging to see you being the church of Jesus. So thank you so much yeah. for uh, just leading the charge because right now yeah. more than ever, I think that, that God wants for his church to know that church isn't just a building, it's a people. And we are are a people and we are just called to share God's light with the darkness of this world. So thanks so much yeah. for your giving. Thanks yeah. for supporting the nonprofits that we have been partnering with here in the city. Uh, you guys are just blowing us away with yeah. your generosity. Your giving is also partnering, helping us the, with the missionaries that we partner with all yeah. over the world. We um, have missionary partners is, literally across the world. I feel like world. during this time, it's really critical and they need support probably more than ever. They need ever. support, absolutely. Um, and your, your generous giving has been able to allow us to continue partnering with them and yeah. continue supporting them. So thank you guys so, so much yeah. for your generosity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and another cool thing that's still happening here at our church is our small groups. And, you know, we're, we're in a small group on Monday night. I love our small group. Our small group is so much fun. We love the people in our small group and our small group leaders. And honestly, I look forward to Monday night so much. Yeah. Because... I just know that like, I don't get to interact with a lot of people during the days anymore. I mean, you're great and I love you and I love our dog, <laughs> but it's just really nice to see other faces, you Absolutely. know, and to just share with one another and to offer up prayer requests and, and just to hear other people's voices in this season. Yeah. It's just so, so refreshing. Yeah. And so I hope that you're in a small group. If you're not in a small group, then I would love for you to reach out to me. I would love to personally make sure yeah. that we can get you plugged into some it's community. It's not too late to jump into it's, a group. It's never it's, too late. It's yeah. never too late. Being with people, having transformative relationships with people is so, so critical. And so I want to help you get into some community. Reach out to me or you can actually go to our uh, church website, uh, a2.church, and you can scroll to the groups tab and there's a form that you can fill out online and that'll send all of the information to us that we'll be able to use to make sure that we get you plugged in to that perfect group to offer you some encouragement throughout this time. Yeah. If you're here watching us this morning on A2TV, we really want to encourage you to interact with the other people that are here. Yeah. We've got the little chat going on on the side that you can jump into. Just type in your name. Um, Tell us just, where you're from. Yeah. And you can just share anything that God is speaking specifically to you through mm -hmm. the message, during yeah. worship. Um, you know, at church, we get to sit next to each other and kind of say things back and forth about what's going on on the stage or like if we need prayer for anything with our friends that we're sitting next to. Talk you about know, our weeks. We can't do that right now. We can't so do it. We've got this comment thread. We really want you to engage in yeah. with each other and um, just let us know something that 
God has spoken to you from our worship experience sure. this morning. Yeah, be sure to hop into the chats and, and just feel free to interact with us, with us there. We'd love to be able to interact with you yeah. since we can't interact in person right yeah. now. So, And since we can't interact in person, you know, it's not like we can make an appointment with you at Starbucks or Panera if you have any type of needs, you know, but Starbucks. we still, I know I would love some Starbucks <laughs> right <it>. now, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, we would still love to be able to partner with you if you have yes. any needs that you just, maybe you need some, some somebody to pray with you, yes. or if you have a circumstance happening in your life right now where you really just need someone to listen and uh, to just be a voice for you, then uh, we have some pastors here on staff that would love to be able to make a Zoom call with you yes. this We'd week. still love to serve you in that way. You sure. can't physically walk in our building right now. We still want you to know that as your church and as your pastors, like we are here for you and yep. we have... Oh, we're just covering you in prayer and we want yeah. to be able to meet with you for whatever other needs you might have. For sure. For sure. So, you know, today's a really big day because of course it's Easter yeah. and, you know, like I'm just excited to actually have put on some nice clothes. This is the first time <laughs> I've actually worn something decent. Real in a, pants. Yeah. <laughs> And not house slippers. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but, but you know, another reason Easter is so important is because of kids' church. Like, kids' church is... We can't let Sunday go by. We're all yes. talking about kids' church. No, never. Kids' church is the best. It's so, so, so important. And so, parents, like, we have been making it so incredibly easy for you to actually have kids' church at your house. We've made it so easy. You can simply go to our church page and you can find our A2 Kids tab. We post our elementary and our preschool resources is there for you. We update that on a weekly basis so that every Sunday, as long as this continues to be the way that we have to do church, we are bringing content to you so that you can have church at home yes. because kids church is so important, you know, especially on Easter. We, we're usually Easter Sunday is b besides maybe like Christmas Sunday. I don't know. Yeah. It's the most fun Sunday. And it's kids so much church. fun. We always do something funny or silly and yep. the kids just love to sing together and dance together yes. and play our games and memorize scripture. And those things are just so vital to our kids' church. And we yeah. don't want your kids to miss that. Yeah. Just because they can't be with us here sure. at church, yeah. we still want to be able to do it all together yeah, online. for sure. So be sure to share with us how that's going. You can just post on Instagram or Facebook and be sure to tag our church in any of your posts. In fact, you know, today on Easter Sunday, we would love to encourage you to just go ahead and gather whoever you're with, whether you're with the family or maybe you're just by yourself and that's fine. Like, just go ahead and take a little selfie with your phone, you know, and try to get your, try to get your screen in the background. So that way uh, you can post on our social media platforms, Easter at A2. Uh, we would love to be able to see uh, how God is ministering to you and your family on yeah. this Easter. Absolutely. For sure, for sure. While we're all sitting around together in the foyer, I want you to go ahead and grab your elements for communion. Church is about to start. In just a few minutes yep. here. Um, so before we jump into the service, go ahead and grab your juice and your crackers, your bread, yep. um, your elements for communion. We've been yep. doing that together the it's past couple so of Sundays. And um, we want to, want to make sure that we honor that on Easter Sunday. Absolutely. You know, it's something that's just so holy and sacred. Yeah. Um, and to do that together, whether oh. it's in the building, at church, or sure. online mm -hmm. at church, yeah. um, we still want to make sure that we're giving you guys the opportunity um, to honor the Lord through that and to celebrate yeah what today means. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I mean, communion is always so special, but I think especially on Easter, it is just, it's just has a little bit more, you yeah. know? So Pastor Chris is going to be leading us in some communion at the end of his message so today. So go grab your things. Go grab them. Go grab them. And come sit back down. And come sit we back down. We will wait for you. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. We're still going to be here. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, for sure. We are about to hand it over to the worship experience, but we want to let you know that if you have anything that you need prayer about, uh, we've kind of mentioned this already, but we just love prayer here. Like, and we're not ashamed of that. Oh. <laughs> we love to pray for you guys. And so if you have any needs, I mean... We know you have needs. Like we all have needs, right? I mean, all of us. no matter how big or how how small, like we want to pray for you yeah. and we are praying with you and for you. We would love to do that in as specific of a way as possible. Yeah. So you can email us at prayer at a2church.org in order for us to be able to get those prayer needs. Or you can actually fill out a virtual connection card. Let us know that you attended church today, wherever you are, fill that out. Whether you've been to A2 for 10 years or if this is your first Sunday, we are so amazingly excited that you are joining with us today for our worship experience. Yeah. Fill out that connection card. Let us know that you're here so that we can connect with you, so that we can be praying for you. Yeah, we know that you miss hearing us say, grab your connection card from the seat back in front of you. 
So we didn't want to deprive you of that. So make yes. sure you really do fill that out, especially yes. if you have prayer needs. It doesn't we take any know. time. It's so easy. Yeah, we know. Um, we want to know that you're here. We want yeah. to know that you stopped by, especially yeah. if you have prayer needs. We want to be able to cover you guys. Yeah, for sure. Before we hand it over to our worship experience, we just want to let you know that we are so honored to be in a church that's so generous. Thank you guys again so much for your continued partnership and giving and the way that you're worshiping God and honoring Him with, with, your, with His tithe and our offering. It's just an incredible honor to see how you're continuing to mm. give to uh, give back to the Lord and you know in your finances and yeah. you know G God's using A2's ministry in so many powerful ways to bless yeah. people yeah. all across our city and all across really the world through our missionary giving and so you guys are making a huge huge difference in your giving thank you so much you can continue to partner with us in giving on our website you can check out the links there on our homepage or you can actually text to give and there's actually a couple of other online options as well in order to do that. So I just want to encourage you to continue to honor God with, with his tithe and our offering during yeah. this time. And I think it's just so beautiful to be able to do that. So, well, Shelby? Does that wrap it up? I think about I think that about wraps it up. We're going to head out of the foyer and into the worship room. And into the room. worship room. Yep. So we'll see you guys in we'll there. We'll see you in there. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And thank you so much for being with us today. Hey everybody, I'm Chris. And I'm Janet. And we have the privilege of serving as pastors at A2 Church in Birmingham, Alabama. We are so honored to have you join us for this online worship experience. And we want you to know that during this time of uncertainty, there are things that don't change. God is faithful, Jesus is everything, faith conquers, love wins, and we are still a church for people who've given up on church. Yeah, the message we've been sharing during this season is really simple, don't give up. We're in this together and we will get through this. If you want to know more about the ministry of A2 Church or if there is a way we can serve you, check out our webpage at a2.church. Again, thanks for joining us. We hope that this online experience encourages and inspires you. We're the Walkers bringing you greetings from Akala. Just wanted to say we miss you. We look forward to seeing you again. Happy Easter and be safe. Be safe. Hey guys, this is Erin, Corey, and Charlie. We miss you guys and are praying for you. Stay positive. We'll get through this. Happy Easter. Hey, hey two family. family. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. And this is the Matthew family reporting from our Hoover hideout. This is Samish, Suzanne, Lee, Noah, Peter, and Jamie. That's right, we added one more during all this crazy time. Hey, we miss you guys. Uh, hope you all are doing well and staying healthy and safe. Uh, we cannot wait to see you all again soon. Have a great Easter Sunday and have a blessed week. Talk to you all soon. Bye. 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 Hi, A2 family. It's Montequa, and I'm bringing you greetings from Pelham, Alabama. I miss you so much, but I'm encouraged because this is only temporary. We will be together again soon. Happy Resurrection Sunday.
everybody. I'm Deanna Polk. I'm Lily. And we sure do miss you guys. I miss my small group. I miss hugging everybody's necks. I miss youth group. 
I miss having her get to go to youth group. So we just want to say one thing to everybody. Happy Easter! Hey, A2 family, it's Shelly and John and Harris and James August, and we miss seeing you guys so much. And we're so thankful that we have A2 TV, so we're able to worship together, but we can't wait to be with you to hug your neck, shake your hands, uh, and celebrate Jesus. But we hope that everybody has a happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter! Hey, A2 Church, this is Kathy Gilbert. I just want to tell you how much I love you, I miss you, and I'm praying for you every day. Can't wait to be with you again. Hope you have the most glorious Easter ever. Love you. Hey, A2 Church, this is Deborah. This is Lauren. We're just doing a cheer for Easter. Go Easter at A2. Woo! Hey, A2 family, it's Tanya and Zara. Happy Easter, guys. We just wanted to take a moment to say that we love you. Um, as we go in today's service, praise the Lord like you've never praised Him before. Know that He's in control, and we hope to give you guys real hugs real soon. Happy Easter. Hey, from wherever you're viewing or listening to this worship experience, I want to take the opportunity to welcome you to Easter at A2 Church. I'm so excited about joining you today. Do you realize that despite the events going on in our world that in many ways are unprecedented, especially for our lifetime. I mean, we've got COVID-19, we've got quarantine, we've got a really, really scary economy. But despite all of that, today, more than 2.3 billion people around this planet are pausing and they're celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ is still alive. Yet this COVID-19 may have the power to bring the wheels of commerce to a grinding halt, institute a six feet distancing rule, put us in quarantine, overwhelm us with unspeakable fear, even take the lives of thousands. But it doesn't have the power to cancel the fact that 2,000 years ago, Jesus once and forever defeated death, hell, the grave, and all their cousins. And despite the fear and uncertainty that may be dominating the landscape right now, whether you're gathered in your home, driving in a car, serving in a hospital, stationed somewhere around the planet, today people around the world are pausing to say with certainty in these very uncertain times, Jesus is alive. In fact, right now, I just want you to type that in the comment section, Jesus is alive. In fact, if you feel comfortable in saying it, say it in your living room. Jesus is alive. Now, here's what Easter is all about in a nutshell. In case you need the cliff notes, there was a man named Jesus. He taught like nobody has ever taught. He lived like nobody has ever lived. He loved like nobody has ever loved. His heart was captured for people like you, people like me. On Thursday evening, his commitment to God's purposes and plan got him arrested. On Friday, his great love led him to be pierced, crushed, punished, whipped, scourged, wounded, crucified, and buried. But then Saturday, Saturday, there was nothing but silence. Jesus' body was in the tomb, sin, death, hell, and the grave appeared to have the upper hand. Jesus' followers were cowering in fear, shock, and awe. But then Sunday, on Sunday, on Sunday, a stone got rolled away. On Sunday, the tomb was empty. On Sunday, hope was reignited. On Sunday, hell was defeated, death was dethroned, darkness was derailed, the devil was demoted. On Sunday, God's power was demonstrated, death was devastated, faith was vindicated, the prophets were validated, the soldiers were aggravated, Mary was motivated, the disciples were animated, and the church was activated. On Sunday, death lost its sting and grave lost its victory. On, sun, on Sunday, sin lost, shame died, hope soared, 
and love one. That's what we're here to celebrate. Get this. Jesus is the greatest hero who won the greatest victory over the darkest enemy in the most important battle in the history of all humanity. And because of that, regardless of what this world can still throw at us, there is always hope because Jesus is still alive. Here's the way Matthew's gospel describes it. I love these words that appear. The first two verses in Matthew's gospel. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, watch the words here, and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. A small three-letter word, and, shows up five times in those two verses. Five times. This word was written in the aftermath of one of the greatest acts of violence and injustice ever perpetrated. After describing the brutal execution and death of Jesus, the writer wants us to know the story didn't end at Jesus' death and burial. And, he writes, that's not the end. Death, loss, Weakness, pain, evil will not write the final word in this story. Verse 2, look at it. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. I love those phrases. The writer is letting us know, yes, Jesus died. Yes, he was buried. All of that was real, actual factual, but it wasn't the end. Look at it again. And there was an earthquake and an angel rolled away the stone. And this is my favorite phrase in the whole series of phrases. And the angel sat on it. Get this. The angel didn't sit on the stone because he was tired and needed to take a break or because he was scared of the guard and needed to wait on reinforcements. He sat on the stone as part of a message God wanted us to get. Here's the message. Rolling away massive stones may be a big thing for you, but it's nothing for me. The problems and past that you feel will crush you are the very things I can take and transform into a seat for the backside of my angel to sit on. Massive stones ain't no big thing, pardon the English, for an even more massive God. When the angel sat on the stone, he was giving us a message. The stone of your sorrow, the grave of your grief, the door to all your disappointments, the tomb of your trauma, the crypt of your collapse, the mausoleum of your mess, the virus that seeks to bring your victimization is something that God will not only give you peace for in the middle of the process, but he has the power to take and transform into a platform from which you can declare the hope and the reality that Jesus is alive. Notice it again. Not only does the angel roll away the stone, but as he sits on the stone, he announces something to the women who've come to investigate. He lets them know the stone is empty. The angel looks at this group of girls and basically says, hey, hey, if you think all of this is something, earthquake, everything else, you ain't seen nothing yet. Skip to verse five. Then the angel spoke to the women Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Wow, just that sentence has so much. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. In other words, I know you had all kinds of dreams and plans that just got flipped when Jesus went to the cross. I know you feel like your hopes have died. Your dreams have been handed a death certificate and the the script of your life has totally been rewritten. But don't be afraid. Verse six, look at it. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples 
that he's risen from the dead. I love that phrase. And go quickly. In other words, this can't wait. This gets top priority. Somebody needs this message. My team is on the edge of throwing in the towel in forfeit. Go quickly with this message of hope. This is not the end of the story. Jesus is alive. They're going to bring up the graphic of this weekend's message on your screen. You see it, that plus sign. It also looks like a cross. And then the word and. See, here's the big idea that has sort of gripped us for this entire weekend in this period of time. It'll come up on the screen. And is a powerful word. We use the plus sign in place of and. It's a powerful word. It reminds us that regardless of what came before, it isn't over. There's more to come. Easter. When we speak of Easter, we're talking everything from Good Friday through Easter Sunday, the cross and the resurrection. Easter means that your past doesn't define you. And this moment won't overwhelm you. And your future is full of hope. And I love this in the big idea. The cross is the and at the end of your past. And the empty tomb is the and in this moment and at the beginning of your future and reminds us that regardless of what life brings, God is for us. Now we were in Matthew. I want to move really quick in the few minutes I have remaining to the book of Romans. Book of Romans was written to another group of people who desperately needed to know that there was an and in their story. Uh, Some people believe that Romans 8 is the greatest chapter in the greatest book, in the greatest collection of books, we call it the Bible, in all the world. The word and gets mentioned 17 times in that chapter. Uh, Paul, the guy who wrote this book, wants his audience to know, hey, I know you're up against a lot. I know you're living in a really scary world with a really uncertain future. In fact, he lists all kinds of things these people are going through. Fear, condemnation, insecurity, uncertainty, trouble, hatred, persecution, joblessness, hunger, homelessness, despair, depression, threats, backstabbing, gossip, pain, shame, regret of past sins, failures, mistakes, the possibility of death. Fears about today, worries about tomorrow, the combined powers of all the forces of hell. He throws it all on the table. He thinks about every possibility life can throw at us before heaven. In Romans 8, verse 38 and 39, he sums it up like this. Oh, I want you to see this. It's going to come up on the screen. Notice the way this begins. In fact, just type it. Type it in the comment section. It's a three-letter word. It takes you like 0.5 seconds to type. And, Romans 8, 38 and 39. And, I'm convinced. And I am convinced that what? Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. If you could get that today, we could stop right here. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the very powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Paul says, I know you're surrounded by scary times in a scary world. And I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Now, I would encourage you at some point today, read through 
the entirety of chapter 8 because it's, it's chock full of such meaty material. Here's my question, though. What provides that kind of security to say, and I'm certain, and I'm convinced, and I know nothing can separate me from God's love? Well, it's something that Paul shares back in verse 31, which is where this entire section begins. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? The words are appearing on your screen right now. Would you say them out loud and together with me? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, when he also give us everything else. That truth gripped Paul. See, according to Paul, God's message to us from the cross and the resurrection of Jesus could be summed up. God's love, God's heart for us could be summed up in four simple words. Each word only has one syllable. None of them have more than three characters. God is for us. You can personalize it. God is for me. You can address it to somebody gathered in that living room. Family member or friend. Maybe they need to hear it. Maybe they need to hear it not from lips coming across a screen, but from flesh and blood sitting in the same room. Maybe you need to look at them right now and say, God is for you. Now, now notice those four words appear in the context of a rhetorical question. Uh, m- most of you know a rhetorical question isn't a question that's asked for the purpose of getting information. It's asked for the purpose of making a point. For instance, uh, we're in quarantine. We're spending a lot of time, those of us who are married, with our spouse. If during this quarantine, your spouse, husbands, husbands, here's insight for you. This might save you. If during quarantine, your wife asks, do these sweatpants make me look fat? That is not a question. She's not looking for information. And if it is a question, there is a right answer. The answer to that question, regardless of how the sweatpants make her look, is absolutely not. You look fantastic. When Paul, when Paul says, if God is for us, who can be against us? He's not really looking for information. He's not looking for somebody in the audience to say, well, he's making a point. And unfortunately, the point is a point that a lot of people watching this have a real hard time believing. See, some people have a hard time believing God is for them because of this current crisis. It's turned everything they believe about God upside down. Others have a hard time believing that God is for them because of their family of origin. They had a dad who was a nightmare or a dad who was unavailable. Some people have a hard time believing that God is for them because of all the pain, loss, setbacks they've experienced in life. I mean, COVID-19 is just the icing on a cake that nobody would ever choose to eat. Sometimes life can just be hard. Maybe there's drama in your family. Maybe a family member or friend of yours has actually contracted the virus and become sick. Maybe during this crisis, you've, you've lost a job or taken a significant cut. In pay. Maybe after three weeks in lockdown, you wonder how much longer you will survive being locked in a house with people you love, but people who are starting to drive you insane. Sometimes life can be hard. A few years ago, Jan and I had a couple of beautiful neighbors. They were an older couple, and we really fell in love with these neighbors because Our story resonated with their story. And one day, uh, 
the man pulled out of his driveway and I was out in the yard doing something. And he stopped, rolled down his window. He was in his upper 70s when this occurred, by the way. He rolled down his window and he started telling me about some additional problems he had been experiencing. And he had been through incredible pain. And then he looked at me and I'd never heard him use what, what some people would call profanity. I'd never heard him use that in all the years I'd lived next to him. But after describing those problems, he said, you know, Chris, life is a, and he inserted a pretty vivid word there. Uh, let me just paraphrase. He said something like this, life sucks and then you die. But it was much more vivid. And then he just sort of paused, somewhat chuckled, rolled back up the window and drove off. And I'm telling you, after he drove away, I crumbled. I mean, I was messed up for hours on that day because I was left with this feeling, does he, and I put his name there, does he really believe that? Is that how he really believes about God, what he really believes about life? There's an old story about two brothers, Bill and Tom, grew up together, family farm. Both boys decided to stay on the family farm, work the farm as their career. Tom was the younger of the two, and everything he did turned out amazing. I mean, he was well-liked. He received honors in high school, got a full ride to the university of his choice, got his degree in agriculture, married the girl of his dreams, ended up having a great marriage, a couple of beautiful dream kids. Tom was the proverbial golden child. Beale, on the other hand, he was another story. Everything he attempted to do was a major struggle. It usually was a colossal failure. He was a pretty shy guy, so it was really difficult for him to connect with other people and make friends, so he ended up being very lonely. He didn't do well in school, never went to college, ended up getting married, but his wife was a nightmare. His marriage ended in a bitter, ugly, nasty divorce. Everything Bill touched fell completely apart. By the time Beale and Tom reached their 50s, Tom had taken over management of the family farm. He was the younger brother. Beale was basically a hired hand. And one day, Beale was out plowing. Tractor, tire blue, fell off. Tractor turned over onto Beale, crushed him. Beale was laying there against the earth, pinned under the tractor. When in his dying breath, he asked the question that had haunted him his entire life. Why? Why me, God? Why is it always me? Why have you made life so easy for Tom and so hard on me? And suddenly, so goes the story. A big voice boomed from heaven and said, well, I don't know, Bill. There's just something about you that sort of ticks me off. Just think about it for a moment. Anybody ever felt God feels that way about you? I think if we were really honest and vulnerable, all of us would have to admit that there have been times when we wondered, is God out to get me? Does God have it in for me? Is God some kind of sadistic tyrant who's looking for a chance to make my life miserable? More than 50 years ago, A.W. Tozer made this statement in one of his books, and it is profound. A.W. Tozer wrote, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So what comes into your mind? When you hear God is for us, God is for me, God is for you, does it resonate? Paul's convinced we've got to get this. So he says, hey, all that I'm convinced of, it flows out of this reality. If God is for us, who can be against us? Let's just take those four words. A few minutes we have remaining together. Let's break them down. God. God is for us. God. We're talking creator, sustainer God. 
creator, sustainer of all life. By life, I mean all matter and substance, what you can see, what you can't see, what you can touch, what you can't touch. We're talking the same God who said, let there be light and light appeared. We're talking about the same God who flung the galaxies into existence. The same God who brought order, beauty, symmetry out of chaos, confusion, brokenness. The same God who spoke and created stars, planets, ocean, land, vegetation, marine life, broke animals. We're talking the same God who carefully fashioned the first man, the first woman out of the dust of the earth, breathed into them the breath of life, and they became a living soul. That God. We're talking the God who is omnipresent. I mean, he's not limited by time or space, but is present at every point in space with his whole being all at the same time. We're talking about the God who is omniscient. That is the God who knows everything, both those things that are actual and those things that are possible. He knows everything past present, future, in one simple and eternal act. We're talking the God who is omnipotent. By that, I mean he has all power and is able to do anything and everything that is consistent with his character and nature. We're talking that God. God. We're talking about the God who's high and and, and exalted. We're talking about the God who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask, think, or imagine according to his mighty power that is at work in us. We're talking about the God whose thoughts are higher than our thoughts, whose ways are higher than our ways. We're talking about the God whose love I can't possibly comprehend, whose mercy I will never possibly deserve, and whose power I can't possibly control. We're talking that God. We're talking about the God, 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 the God who made the sun stand still, who parted the Red Sea, who supernaturally provided food for around three million people during the Exodus by providing manna every morning and Chick-fil-A quail when they needed it and water out of a rock. We're talking about the God who could roll back the Jordan River and bring down the walls of Jericho. We're talking about the God who turned water into wine, healed the son of a politician just by speaking the word, healed a blind man by spitting in the dirt, making a mud pie, putting mud on the blind man's eyes, and then telling him, go take a bath. We're talking that God. We're talking the God who walked on water, calmed the storm. We're talking about the God who interrupted a funeral possession, the funeral possession of a young man, raised him to life and gave him back to his mom. We're talking the God who raised a guy named Lazarus back to life, who had already been dead four days and lost the possibility of a refund on a casket. We're talking that God. God. God, what is the second word? Is. Not maybe, not has been, not was, not might be, not will be, not could be, not should be, but God, say it out loud, is. On this day, at this hour, In this minute, at this moment, as you hear this sentence, God is. Not a long time ago. Not when Jesus died and then rose again from the grave. Not just on your good days when everything is going great. God is. What's the third word? Do you see it? God is for. Oh, I can't wait till we can have that cup of coffee again, sit at Starbucks, look across the table, because at this point, I I would sit down my coffee cup on the table and I would look at you and I would say, God is for, he's not ambivalent. He's certainly not against, he's not neutral, he's not casual, he's not apathetic, he's not indifferent. Hear this, God is for. (laughs) <laughs> There's this great story in the Old Testament. It shows up in 2 Kings chapter 6, where a guy felt like most of us feel at this moment, a bit overwhelmed and outnumbered. This unnamed assistant to the prophet of God, a guy by the name of Elijah, he was so worried because he and Elisha were surrounded by an army with horses and chariots, and this army contingent had been given the assignment to bring these two guys in or take them out. And Elisha's assistant looked at the special forces unit and panicked. He flipped out. He thought that he and the prophet Elisha were toast. But while the assistant was flipping out, 
While he was busy scrolling from Fox News, CNN, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, you know, it just gets you more and more anxious, right? The prophet was cool beans. He didn't break a sweat because somehow he had managed to turn off the voice of fear and somehow tuned into the voice of faith. His assistant was so frantic. Oh, what are we going to do? What do we do now? This has got to be the end. Elisha just shook his head, sort of smiled at the kid and said this, 2 Kings 6, 16. Don't be afraid. I love this. Those who are with us are more than those who are with him. Then the prophet prayed, God, open his eyes, verse 17, so that he can see. And for a moment, God allowed this guy to see into the spiritual realm. And what he saw was not the power and military might of an invading army. He didn't see the death tracker on CNN or whatever news channel that you watch that keeps track of every, everything that's happening. What he saw was an entire mountainside filled with horses and chariots of fire. He saw angel armies of the God most high. I've got news for you. If you, if you, if you could take off the blinders, if you could see the spiritual sidelines, if you could look into the grandstands of the universe, you would see a God who at this moment has not gone into hiding. He's not teetering on the edge of retirement. You would see God, a God who is not angry, ticked off, vindictive, a God who's not just waiting for you to blow it. You wouldn't see a God who is powerless and helpless. You would see a God who is, get this, for you. He's standing, he's clapping, he's cheering, he's shouting your name. He's even assigned angels as a spe special protection unit to you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says angels are servants sent to care for those who will inherit salvation. Here is the point. God is for and fill in the fourth word you. Not just for the saints, not just for the religious rock stars, not for the people who have it all together, not for the people who've never blown it. Not for the people who think they're perfect. God is for you. Just personalize it wherever you are. In fact, in the comment section, personalize it and write, God is for me. He's for you when you struggle with doubts, questions, when you find it difficult to believe. He's for you when you're overwhelmed with fear and insecurity. He's for you even with your sins, your past, your struggles, your porn addiction, your substance abuse problem. The prolific list of mistakes and imperfections, habits, hurts, hang-ups, and idiosyncrasies that you've struggled with for decades. He is for you. Your parents may have forgotten you. Your teachers may have overlooked you, neglected you. Your brothers and sisters may have shamed you or refused to even talk to you. But you need to know this. God is for you. I love the way Max Licato described this. He said, if God had a calendar on his refrigerator, he'd have your birthday circled. If God had a car, your name would be on the personalized plates. If there's a tree in heaven, God would have your name carved into the park. Hey, tattoo people. You know that God actually has a tattoo? Some of you will take this verse. It'll be the only thing you get out of the sermon, this verse. That's not hypothetical. It's true. Isaiah 49, verse 16, God says this. This is how important you are to God. I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Yeah, that tattoo that God wears, it's the nail prints. He is for you. Get this, if you could ever get your heads and hearts wrapped around this, it would change everything. God is for us. God is for you. God is for me. Those four words change everything. They are the and that reminds us that your past doesn't define you and this moment won't overwhelm you and your future is full of hope. If you want to meet that God personally, I want to pray with you and for you right now. He revealed himself in Jesus. He lived the life you could never live, died the death you and I deserve to die, 
was raised again to life so that we might experience real life. And he's waiting right now to meet you where you are. He is for you. That's what the cross and the resurrection were all about. So pray this prayer wherever you are. I'll just lead you in this prayer. Just pray it out loud. I believe Jesus lived the life I could never live. He died the death. I deserve to die. He died for my sin in my place. Three days later, he was raised again to life so that I could live forever. His death and resurrection mean that my past doesn't have to define me. This moment will not overwhelm me and my future is full of hope. I trust Jesus to forgive my sin and lead my life. Amen. If you made that decision to follow Jesus, you can comment in the comment section right now. Just put, God is for me. God is for me. Write it down. You can also, if you need prayer in this moment, you can also email us at prayer at a2church.org. We're honored to pray with you and for you. We're even taking virtual prayer appointments in this moment. Gather the elements of Holy Communion. We've provided a video teaching on how to lead your family and friends, small group in Holy Communion. It is on the A2 Church YouTube page. But right now, take out elements. Any kind of piece of bread will do. According to Matthew 26, the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. You can break the bread. I'm going to tear off a piece of the bread for myself. He broke it and said, this bread is my body for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me. Let's eat the bread together. Jesus, thank you for your body. Isaiah said the chastisement that brought us peace, that brought us wholeness was placed upon you. And with your wounds, by your stripes, we are healed. Peter said you were healed. Right now, we thank you for everything provided through your body. After supper, he took the cup and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Whenever you drink this, remember me. Let's drink the cup. And take a moment right there in your home to thank him for the precious blood of Jesus that has cleansed us from all sin. The, pres the precious blood of Jesus that gives us access into a new and living way that allows us to come boldly into the presence of God. The precious blood of Jesus by which, according to Revelation 12, we overcome. The team is about to come. They're going to sing another song, and I encourage you to sing along with them. And after that song, if you're gathered today in your home, I would encourage you to have a time of prayer. What better day to pray about the needs that exist in your family, in your home, among the people that you're gathered with today than this moment when we focus upon this fact that God is for us. God bless you. We can't wait to see you A2 midweek on Wednesday. Have a great Easter.
Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that God was able to minister to you through our worship experience. And Shelby, I told them that the message was going to be good. Didn't I tell them in the foyer? You did. You it was them. such an amazing message in worship. I'm so glad that you guys joined us today. And gosh, I mean, I'm just so excited right now knowing and just being reminded that Jesus is alive. Amen. That he is risen. He is. Indeed. And because of that, we have more to our story. God is not finished yet. Right. So thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. If there was anything that came up during the service that you have a prayer need for, you can fill out your connection card. You can email us. Whatever way that you can get in touch with us, please let us know what your prayer needs are because we want to make sure that you are covered during this season. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah for sure. And before, before we sign off, we just want to again let you know about the different ways that you can join us in giving. You can go to our website. You can text to give. Uh, you can give online. Thank you so much for your continued partnership and your mm-hmm continued giving. Yeah. I just am so glad that God has enabled us to worship him in our finances. Like yes. that's just such a blessing just to be able to trust him and to joyfully give back to the Lord. So I want to encourage you to continue to do that. And we are just so thankful that you've joined us today for Easter Day 2. Remember to share your pictures with us online. If you took any selfies during Easter service today, tag us Facebook, Instagram, Easter at A2. And other than that, don't forget to join us Wednesday for midweek, midweek at 7, seven o'clock. o'clock on all of our platforms. So that's about it for us today. Happy Easter. We love you, A2, and we'll see you at midweek. Bye. Bye.